Hey guys, welcome to Flat Top King. Today we're putting that pit boss bad boy to the test. Cook number three, big breakfast. That's right, look, we asked a long time ago what would be considered like the holy grail of flat top grilling. Obviously you got your smash burgers. Obviously if you got fajitas, something similar to that. But way high on the list was breakfast. So we're gonna try everything out today. We got some uh, bacon, a good bacon. On a Sunday morning, cannot start without a whole pound of bacon. You guys know that we like our muffin mix pancakes. If you guys haven't seen that, I can post a link in the description. Or we can just make it really quick and show you how to do it. Fantastic. I would recommend this every single time. We don't even, there's no if, ands, or buts. Throw some eggs down. How we're going to do them, no clue. Found these jokers at the uh, grocery store. Old school style uh, potato cakes. We're going to throw those down. That's the first time cooking those. Other than that, let's go. All right, first things first. The bake, oh, baking mix. I've got one cup in there. We like to use a chocolate chip because that's what my girls like. The whole package. Come in here like a cap full of vanilla, give or take. Throw in an egg, one cup of milk. Now that's all in there, just incorporate it. Remember, you don't have to get all the lumps out. Just make a good batter. And there you go. Simple and easy. Let this rest for a second. We'll set this to the side while we start cooking our bacon. Our flat top is on low. We're just gonna lay all the bacon down and then start on our hash browns because it'll take a minute for those frozen hash browns to cook. All right, while I'm just flipping the bacon, getting everything moved around, I just wanted to say something real quick. This is our third or fourth cook on the Pit Boss. I told you guys when we started this process, I really wanted to hammer down to uh, try a bunch of different recipes just to get a feel for it. Is this something we enjoy? Is this something we could recommend to you guys? So far, some of the cooks that we have, we've been very pleased, but there's a long ways to go. So we're trying to incorporate the Camp Chef and the Pit Boss back to back. We've got two more planned cooks after this one. We're gonna do like the ultimate, epic, massive hash brown throwdown because there's nothing more exciting to get that crunchy, crisp hash brown. That's the way I enjoy it. And second, biscuits and gravy. Now we got that doming action. I've been playing around with a couple ideas. No doubt we could put biscuits, biscuits and gravy on there and that is by far my favorite recipe. After that happens, now we can start comparing back and forth size, temperature, uh, the pros, the cons. I'm already starting to learn stuff about the shelves, about the heat, about the grease trap, but it just takes a while to cook on it to learn it. I would be, it'd be naive or stupid or irresponsible for me just to get it and come out of the gate and saying everything I like about it when I don't have any knowledge about the system. So that's something to look out for. Now that our bacon's crisping up, I'm just moving around trying to save some of this grease. I've been trying to, I moved everything over and scraped my flat top. Now I'm gonna use this bacon grease. You know it. Start frying those hash browns. All right, our bacon's done. I'm just gonna have it start draining off. Now one might assume, oh, you can't put metal on the pit boss. Well, true and false. I wouldn't recommend using metal utensils because you're consistently going over the surface. But if you take the idea of a cooling rack like this and it just sets on top, there's nothing wrong with it. You're not aggressively going after the surface. It's just setting right on top. I would recommend it and I'm not, I don't have a problem doing it. So that's just a little tip for tat. You see how my grease is catching down here? I've been adjusting my, uh, what do you call it? My griddle surface. I kind of like the idea of it running towards me because it naturally feeds into the grease trap, but I'm also using it to my advantage. When we talk about cooking on the flat top, one of the small things that we want to do, but sometimes is extremely hard, is to shallow fry. So look really closely what we got going on. You guys see the bubbles? 
since this does has a lip, I, although I don't like the lip, now I can see the advantage of having the lip. So that's one of the pros and cons we'll go over. But what I found is since the oil comes down to me, look how great of an idea this is. Now we're shallow frying, literally on our flat top, plenty of oil, just like you would in a skillet. So that's a pro for me. All right, now that my hash browns are kind of ready to flip, to show you guys an idea. Since they are frozen, it's my first time cooking them. They've actually taken a lot longer than what I expected. So we're gonna keep filling around. Oh, that's a good one. Keep filling around with them, trying to get them crispy. I just keep moving that bacon fat. Now you can use whatever kind of grease you want to, but since you already got it, you might as well use it to your advantage. Oh yeah, that's way better. Those three right there are really good. I wonder why. So this is what I've been doing. Just pushing that grease up before I get rid of it. And literally, I'm just frying right now on the flat top. Just keeping the oil nice and easy. The flat top staying, it's on low, but it's staying around, it was about 350. Yeah, it's 328, 330. Now that my hash browns got some good color on them, I'm gonna start easy now. You didn't want to make no splash on your old uh, goodies down here. But just bringing the grease down naturally, let it follow that trough right into the oil hole. What we're doing now is we're getting ready to move these hash browns off and get started on our pancakes so on a clean surface. All right, you guys see now we got really, really good color. Personally, I like my hash browns crispy. You guys see we got a little bit of grease going on, so what I'm gonna do is set it right on top of here. Now that residual heat's gonna come up through here and still cook these hash browns. It's gonna keep them nice and crisp. That's what I like about these cooling racks. One thing I've had to find myself personally to do is to be really careful on not keeping the silicone spatulas on the flat top at all times where I'm used to just putting my flat top or my uh, my spatulas on my griddle and working. With silicone, you wouldn't want to do that. The heat just builds and builds and builds. Different silicone spatulas have different heat requirements. I like the uh, the one right here that we mentioned in the silica in the uh, spatula video. It's rated at 600 degrees. This one's, like I said, quickly becoming my favorite, and it's only rated for like 428. But so far, the flat top has been at times over 428, and it hasn't hurt it. So I'll let you know if it does. All right, here we go. Everything on low. I know what you're thinking after all that gre bacon grease. Why in the world would you put butter down? Butter and pancakes. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. It's also a good way to determine if your flat top's too hot. Nice grilled surface. Here, let me show them real quick. You see, since we let the pancake mix set up, see all the bubbles breaking right there? That's why you want your pancake mix to set up for a minute before you put them down. Leave yourself plenty of room to flip the pancakes. One quick tip, I see people all the time doing it and got nowhere to flip them and then they wanna flip them on top of each other. So always give yourself a way out. All right, you'll start noticing that your pancakes start bubbling up. I got my section right here. So obviously that shows you there's a, it's not as hot up there. Since these don't have to be turned. Ooh, dang chocolate chip pancakes. Boy, they look good. Nice and fluffy. That's why we add the, the muffin mix. First of all, you can add any flavor you want to. I mean, the flavors are just unlimitless. All right, now at this point, I've got five, five eggs in here. I want to scramble up for the girls and my wife. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this one off completely, okay? So now what we're doing, we've got butter and bacon grease left over. So I'm gonna take my spatula. And since I'm just learning my flat top, the first thing I'm gonna do, if you don't have a thermometer, what's my number one go-to? How the butter reacts. Right. So I know what's on there, right? So to me, it's a hair hot. Okay. Which is fine. They like cheese in their eggs. So we'll make some.
scrambled eggs and cheese. I'm gonna try to do the all five of them to show you guys how to do this. I'm gonna cut it completely off. No flame at all. I can already tell my butter's getting hot. So I'm just gonna let it cool down for a second. degrees too hot for eggs so you got to act fast okay you can still do it but you're gonna have to you're gonna have to scramble all right scramble in small batches that way they don't run away from you See, I'm kind of making like an egg dam. And the more eggs you add, the fluffier you can get your eggs. They don't cook as hard. It takes a little bit longer to cook and you can control it. That's perfect. But this also can be the difference between cooking on a, a rolled steel flat top at 400 and cooking on this uh, ceramic coated plate at 400. I don't think my eggs are overcooking at all. I'm gonna turn my flat top back on. Those eggs probably drop the temperature a lot. And look, no browning, no hard eggs, nothing. See how moist our eggs are? That's what you're wanting right there. I'm trying to film one-handed. <laughs> and then she's going to tell us that she don't want pancakes because she's watching her carbs. She's <laughs> literally engulfed a whole pancake while we've been filming this video. <laughs> All right, right there. That's perfect for us. Still moist. They're going to continue to cook. Look at that right there. That's a money shot if you've ever seen one. <laughs> Come back here with the butter. That's a good gauge. See how soft that butter is right there? See how it's not really bubbling hard away? So that means this is hotter. I'm gonna turn that down. Turn this one up. See how that's bubbly and this is not? You see the difference? Yep. Because these two aisles are running right there. So that's a good way to tell. And you can see how the difference reacts. See the difference? When we put that one down first, we knew the left side was harder than the right side. That to me is my perfect egg. That's a hair over brown. I'm not really big on the brown eggs, but I'll eat any day of the week. But this one right here, holy smolies. All right, eggs are done. Give me a good old crispy hash brown. I don't know if you guys can hear this. Crispy enough for me. Some bacon. One of those good pancakes. Now the difference between me eating my pancake and my wife eating her pancake, and she likes that sugar-free crap. Uh, not today, I said I'll never eat that again. So I went out and I actually bought it myself. <laughs> so you ain't putting that stuff in my pantry. <laughs> All right, so these were some of the questions I had. Will it crisp up bacon? Yes. Bacon will fry in its own fat no matter what the heat source is. So don't worry about whether or not the pit boss is ceramic coated or flat top grilled. The bacon will fry in its own fat and get crispy regardless of the surface. It got our hash browns crispy. I love the idea of that edge being right there. I showed you why. Then all of a sudden we cooked eggs. And I'm telling you right now, if I had a chance to to say if that's perfect or not. For me and my personal eating experience, that is the perfect egg. And you saw the pancake rise like no other. So, still a long ways to go, the whether or not we like it, but we're getting closer and closer. Money. Mmm. Tastes like McDonald's. Hash that boy's good. <laughs> let me try a little bite of the hash brown. Here, let me get you one else syrup. Here, this corner right here. Hey, that's good. You can almost taste a little bit of hint of that bacon. Mmm. Boy, that's a good hash brown. <laughs> <laughs> I 
don't know what else you need. Big breakfast on the pit boss griddle. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to press that subscribe button. Pound the no case button, share it with your friends.